high. If you're watching this and you're aspiring to be, are currently, or are failing at being a Gary's Mod role playing game master. Who am I? Well. Not the point, silly. The point is, is that I'll be teaching you, yes you, you creatively inadequate fuck, on how to game master. Now, for those special pumpkins that are new and are probably wondering, what is game master? Well, let me tell you. God. Being game master, or GM for short, means that you're you utilize your powers to torment and I me challenge your player base by creating a story that enraptures them. This is usually paired with NPCs and dumb AI enemies that I swear I killed too as a basis or benchmark. I will be utilizing the Halo universe. But any of these techniques and tricks can be utilized for any military RP server. When the fuck did I get a nuke? The AI, though a very rudimentary and simple enemy to fight against the players, is very strong when put in large numbers, but can die very quickly to hard fire. Unless you put him in a fence like I did. <laughs> the players can't get to them now! Another good choice to make is making sure that you pick the correct bomb size for the player base. Too small and they might not even feel it for the event and it would ruin the immersion. Too large and you might kill the whole player base and ruin the whole event. Make sure to check with your local head GM to make sure you're picking the correct size of bomb to use against your player base. Another important note is vehicles. Vehicles ensure the players feel powerful and able to communicate effectively utilizing a vehicle against your enemies. But make sure you're able to handle the vehicles during an event. Too many vehicles might cause some problems. Also, these are the only vehicles that you can use because the rest of them are useless. Another thing to utilize is a tool gun. The tool gun is the best GM's arsenal tool, shown here by Kelly. Now, GM's tool gun is a very powerful weapon should not be utilized for any tomfoolery or bullshit whatsoever. So, when using the tool gun, make sure to not spam bomb- Wait, Kelly? Kelly, don't you hit that bomb- KELLY! This, this doesn't seem right at all. Yeah, no, no, yeah, bring it back, bring it back. No, we probably just shouldn't insert a Spartan into an event and just call that the day. No, just get it out of here. 12 seconds later. What, it, what is this? Did you even think about the character? Did you really? Yeah, I didn't think so. You can't just be an ODST and not have any storyline. Get it out of here. Go, shoot. Off with you. Twelve seconds later. Ah, a hunter. A perfect choice. See, now if the character is made correctly, this hunter should prove to be very difficult towards the players, but it should, should be challenging enough, as it's armed with a fuel rod cannon to emplace its very powerful hunter cannon. The players will have a fun time whether this be a friendly character, or have a troubling time as an enemy character. This should inspire some creativity within your player base on how to deal with this situation, or how to befriend it if necessary. And he's killed himself. Great. Most of the player base will not be big Spartans or big space marines. Most of the player base will most likely be in bulk of your grunt forces. In this case, Marines. Marines should be the most important force you utilize during an event or quote-unquote mission, as well as any sub-detachment to the Marine Corps. Make sure that they are on the forefront of the storyline and the plot point. No small group of Spartans will be the main storyline, as most of the player base are not Spartans. They're Marines, they're Grunts, and most importantly, they are the bulk of your player base, so make sure they are thoroughly entertained. But wait. What about the non-marine forces? The ones that have to sit in the back line because they're not front frontliners. 
They make sure that the vehicles work, or they fly the vehicles, giving air support to these young marines going into the front lines. Or they're calling in resupply and making sure that the marines are well stocked. These poor fools and bastards don't get a chance to prove their worth because the GM doesn't supply them with the necessary tools to be able to do their job. These poor pilots, naval, and tank crewmen can't do their job because the GMs don't think of them. Because they don't give them the tools to give them the chance to fight the URF like the Marines do. Because they require effort. These useless and poor individuals are basically useless without their tools. So make sure when you're making an event to not only think of the Marines, but to also keep some mind out for your naval and pilots. Support your local NAVCOM and pilots. They do also want a chance at the URF. Now I've all thrown all this terminology and tools at you, but you really don't know how to use them, do you? Yeah, I figured as much. Well, let's figure that out. Oh, he's dead. One good place to start is your location. Location, location, location. Having a wide enough map to be able to support ODST drops and aircraft or any military RPS server is perfect. But having a map that's far too constrained or far too complicated for the players to navigate might cause some issues within your event. So make sure that you have a wide open space for your players to romp and kill around in. Any map that's too complicated might not work as well unless you really know the map. Also, make sure that your map isn't far too dusty. Weather effects based off of map might cause players some confusion as to what the story is leading to, as well as the fact that it might cause some confusion in navigation. My usual trick is to make sure that I base the story off the map. So if you're working on a map on Mars or some desert-like planet, make sure to write a story that makes sense to put the people on that place. Now, to explain this in better detail, music is a very important part of an event. It makes sure that the players feel immersed when moving inside enemy lines, or attacking the enemy at a stationed position. To make this, I'll put up an example. This is an event that has the wrong music. Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. Now, this is an extreme example, but it helps you give an idea of what unnecessary music or not the right music might happen to an event. It can get claustrophobic or it can get entirely memey and off point to the event that you're trying to make. Now, this is a good example of the right music to play at a certain time. Now, last but not least, is the people like myself who take dramatic music a little bit too seriously, or maybe not serious enough, depending on the opinion. But I like to do it because it makes people feel kick-ass, and it's funny. Fuck you! As a GM, you'll run into people that will bitch and complain about a lot of your events, and some of these people might have true criticisms, but these poor saps don't. They are bitching and complaining because they don't have weapons. You know how to handle this, right? <laughs> See? Problem solved. As a GM, you need to understand to take criticism fully, and be able to understand when you need to change something. And sometimes, you understand how to murder someone like a little bitch they are. This can also apply to many other forms of players, like power grabbers. 
dumb bitches who ERP for power and ranks. And to that one dumb recruit that won't shut up about the Master Chief. Now, I haven't covered everything. Some things I'm leaving left out for you guys to figure out and enjoy. Make sure to talk to fellow GMs and work together on events. Because it helps immerse the players as there's more than one thing going on. Because there's three of you instead of one of you. Don't stretch yourself out too thin. And to make sure to talk to your head GM to make sure everything goes well. Isn't that right, Morty?